And if that wasn't enough, while the Crew Dragon was at the space station, Cassidy also conducted four spacewalks with Bob Behnken, totaling a terrible... Uh, spending a total of 23 hours and 37 minutes outside the vacuum of space while the two replaced aging nickel hydrogen batteries with new lithium ion batteries. That brought Cassidy's spacewalking total to 54 hours and 51 minutes, over 10 spacewalks that spanned his three missions. With that, he is tied for most spacewalks by a U.S. astronaut and ninth on the all time list of time spent spacewalking. When is upcoming landing? Cassidy will have spent a total of 378 days in space over his three missions, putting him at fifth place on the list of most time spent in space by a U.S. astronaut. Anatoly Evanishin has also made three trips to space, but since all of his were during long duration, he is a total of 468, six, 476 days in space, putting him at 25 on the all-time list for time spent in space. And since this was his first space flight, Yvonne Wagner will land today with 196 days in space. Cassidy Ivanishin and Wagner said goodbye to their crewmates, Kate Rubin and Sergei Ryzhikov, earlier today with a uh, hatch closing at 3.24 p.m. Central Time. This is some recorded video of that uh, hatch closing. You can see Cassidy there along with Ivanishin. They said goodbye to their crewmates, Kate Rubens, Sergei Ryzhikov, and Sergei Kuzverchkov earlier before closing those hatches. And that was the last view that we'll get of them until we see them coming out of the Soyuz on the ground in Kazakhstan. That again was hatch closing at 324, and since then, the Soyuz undocked from the International Space Station at 6.32 p.m. Central Time. Before doing that, they were able to get all the required leak checks and preparations done on time, and that set them on their way for today's 9.55 p.m. Central Landing. They've since been moving into position about 20 miles away from the space station and are just about ready to go for the deorbit burn, which will take place at 9 p.m. Central just 24 minutes from now. Here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, Flight Director Chris Edelin is leading the team here in Houston as they follow along in tonight's activities with European Space Agency astronaut Andreas Morgan Mogensen beside him at the Capcom capsule. And in Kazakhstan, a number of officials and vehicles are standing by in preparation for the landing. A total of 
12 Mi-8 helicopters deployed to various sites across Kazakhstan for Soyuz landings. Eight are at the expected landing site southeast of Jeskazgan, Kazakhstan, and two more will be ready about 250 miles away in the area where touchdown would take place if a ballistic entry occurred. The final two helicopters will loiter midway between the two. Um, we are not, of course, expecting a ballistic entry, but we do always prepare for one just in case uh, we, need to, we need to respond to it. So that is part of the standard plan. Also deployed for landing are six all-terrain vehicles and three Anatov airplanes that serve as flying command centers. They'll have direct communication with the crew and will relay those communications back to Moscow. We've been asking you to send in your questions about tonight's landing using the hashtag AskNASA on social media, and you can keep sending those in, and we'll keep trying to answer them when there's time, starting now. From Isabella, we received the question, what's the current weather at the landing site? Uh, Weather-wise, things are looking reasonably nice at the landing site. Temperatures today should be around 45 degrees Fahrenheit and breezy, so it will be cool, but not nearly as cold as it can be at, at Soyuz landings. They'll also have a few clouds at 5,000 feet, scattered clouds at 20,000 feet, and winds out of the west at 14 knots. Visibility should be uh, six miles or more at the landing site by the time Soyuz arrives. But the crew won't actually spend too much time outside regardless. As soon as the helicopters with the landing team arrive at the landing site, they'll begin setting up a medical tent where the crew can work through their regular post-landing checkouts before boarding helicopters to Jessica's gone where they'll board airplanes to take them home. Our next question is from Raul who wants to know how long it will take for the astronauts to reach Earth. Well, from this exact moment, we have got about an hour and 13 minutes before tonight's 9.55 p.m. Central Landing, but the point that determines when you land is actually the orbit burn. That's when the Soyuz fires its engines to slow down and drop back into the Earth's atmosphere, and at that point, there's no going back. But it's a pretty quick trip. Once they've completed the deorbit burn, they'll be on the ground in less than an hour. Next up is uh, Lucy, who wants to know what happens to the rest of the Soyuz mo module after the descent module separates. Uh, just 18 minutes after the deorbit burn starts, once the Soyuz is on its way back to Earth, the descent module is going to separate from the orbital module uh, and the propulsion module, and the descent module lands back on the Earth with the astronauts inside. The other modules are left to burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. That is actually the fate of much of what is launched into space. In fact, for most of our cargo vehicles, the entire spacecraft is filled with trash and then sent away to burn off as it falls through the Earth's atmosphere. It's a very convenient way to get rid of trash. Scott has a question about Soyuz control. He wants to know if the crew would be able to handle the deorbit landing uh, deorbit and landing procedures on their own without ground assistance if they lost communication with the ground. But actually, there's there's really very little for the ground or the crew to do. The vehicle does most of the work on its own uh, because most of its actions are automated. But the things that the crew doesn't require, uh, the, the, the things that the crew does do, do not require assistance from the ground. So the answer is yes. And one more from now, this one from Kristen, who wants to know how Chris Cassidy is going to be getting home after landing. 
And this is actually the longer part of the trip for Cassidy. Once he finishes his initial checkouts at the landing site, he and his crewmates are going to be getting on helicopters to deliver them back to Jessica's Gun, which is the nearest town. And there will be planes waiting for them there to take Anatoly Ivanishin and Yvonne Wagner back to Russia while Cassidy is brought back here to Johnson Space Center in Houston. And for Cassidy, that trip will take almost another day. So that is all for now, but keep sending in your questions, and we will keep trying to answer a few before we get done for the night. You can get yours to us on social media using the hashtag AskNASA. We're now less than 15 minutes away from the Soyuz MS-16's deorbit burn. That's scheduled for 9 p.m. Central Time when the Soyuz will be about 20 miles away from the space station. That burn is going to last 5 minutes and 20 seconds, during which the thrusters firing will act as a brake on the Soyuz vehicle while it's still 260 miles above the Earth, slowing it down by 128 meters per second, or 268 miles per hour, and dropping it out of orbit. You can see... Uh, graphic of how that will work here. Basically flips around, turns uh, and fires its thrusters into the direction that it was traveling to slow it down and drop it out of orbit. 
about 23 minutes later at 9.28 p.m., that's when the Soyuz is at an altitude of 87 miles above the Earth. The vehicle's computer will command the descent module of the Soyuz to separate from the rest of the spacecraft just above the first traces of the Earth's atmosphere. That's what you saw just there a minute ago. The orbital module on top, which is where the crew has a small amount of room to move around during its flight to the space station after launch. And the instrumentation and propulsion module on the bottom, which house the oxygen storage tanks, attitude control thrusters, avionics, and communications and control equipment. Those will all separate from the descent module in the middle where the crew is seated. The descent module contains personally contoured seats for the crew members use during launch, entry, and landing, as well as all the controls and displays needed for critical flight activities. It also has life support provisions, batteries for re-entry and landing, and parachutes and soft landing rocket engines to slow the vehicle just before touchdown. The orbital module and the instrumentation and propulsion module will burn up, as we mentioned earlier, in the Earth's atmosphere, while the descent module continues on with Cassidy, Evanition, and Wagner inside. Then three minutes later, at 9.31 p.m., 60 miles or 316,000 feet above the Earth, Soyuz will begin atmospheric re-entry. At that point, the descent module's computers will orient the capsule with its ablative heat shield pointing forward to protect it from the heat as it begins to fly through the Earth's atmosphere. And the crew will begin to feel the first effects of gravity again at that point. That's going to build through about 9.38 p.m., when they'll experience a maximum pressure or G-load for the descent. That will probably briefly cause them to feel four to five times the force of gravity. Just two minutes later, 15 minutes before touchdown, when the Soyuz is 35,105 feet above the Earth and traveling at a speed of about 514 miles per hour, the Soyuz computers will command the first of a series of parachutes to deploy. Two pilot parachutes will come first, one 6.7 square feet and one 48.4 square feet. And together, they will drag out the Drogue Chute, a 258 square foot parachute that slows the Soyuz down to 178 miles per hour. Drogue Chute also will create a gentle spin for the Soyuz as it, drank, as it uh, dangles underneath, which will help stabilize the capsule in its final minutes before touchdown. Just before touchdown, that drogue chute will be jettisoned to make way for the deployment of the 3,281-foot main parachute. It continues slowing the capsule down to a speed of about 16 miles per hour. At first, the capsule hangs beneath it at a 30-degree angle to the horizon to help with aerodynamic stability, but after one of the two harnesses connecting the parachute to the capsule is severed, the Soyuz will ride itself so that it's in a vertical position through touchdown. When the capsule is just 16,000 feet or three miles from the Earth's surface, the vehicle's heat shield will be jettisoned and any residual propellant will dissipate. Without the heat shield, the Soyuz altimeter, an, at, an instrument that uh, measures altitude by bouncing signals to the ground and back to the Soyuz, will be exposed to the surface of the Earth and it will be used to provide the capsule's computers updated information on altitude and rate of descent. At that point, the vehicle's computers will also arm the module's seat shock absorbers. When the Soyuz reaches an altitude of about 39 feet, the cockpit displays will tell Anatoly Venetian, who's the Soyuz commander, to prepare for the firing of the soft landing en engines. Those are six solid propellant engines, and they actually will be fired just three feet above the ground in two seconds before touchdown, allowing the Soyuz to slow down to five feet per second or about three and a half miles per hour for a landing at 9.55 p.m. Central Time, or 8.55 a.m. local time in Kazakhstan.
And we see the maneuver. Copy. We see the maneuver. And I am sending the top three, three commands. I sent the command at 04510 and S9 is illuminated. Bill cooler dry fan off. And can I send the next command a little bit earlier? J3. Would be program three long home control activation. I am uh, sending the, you have a go to send the command. And we have comm session set up at 0453.52. We copy. Иркуты, just a reminder, please report the delta V and then the time of thruster activation and how long it worked for. How long was the burn? Okay, we got it, we remember. Less than five minutes to go now before that uh, 9 p.m. Central Time deorbit burn coming up. That's going to drop uh, the Soyuz MS-16 out of the Earth's atmosphere and begin the uh, journey home for the for the crew on board. NASA's Chris Cassidy and Roscosmos's Antoli Ivanishin and Av Ivan Bogner, who have all spent 196 days on board the International Space Station. Wrapping that up today with a 9.55 p.m. landing.
three minuses. Two minutes. Just two minutes left now until to the deorbit burn begins. It's going to last five minutes and 20 seconds, and that will slow the Soyuz down enough to drop it back into the Earth's atmosphere and allow it to continue on its journey towards the steppe of Kazakhstan, where they'll be landing today. And one minute, we do confirm. He was ready, and escadet covers are open. Orbital maneuver engine covers are open. Reporting all systems are ready for the deorbit burn to begin. That's less than 30 seconds away now. And again, that's going to last five minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, propellant is 423. And we're not wasting any propellant here for all the eight seconds. We have a third burn has begun now. On the nozzles, thruster nozzles. Printer. Inaudible. 30 second, 13 meters. Copy. The parameters are nominal. The combined propulsion system at 45, 19 meters. The parameters are nominal and uh, 13.7 on the nozzles. One minute into today's deorbit burn. Again, last five minutes and 20 seconds. Cadillac parameters are nominal. We have 12.5 uh, on the nozzles. Copy. At 15.32, and 12 and a half. And Cadillac um, parameters nominal. Copy. One minute, 39.2, 0 0.45 for delta V. Cadu parameters are nominal. Zero 0.45 delta V, 12.6 on the nozzles. Cadu parameters are nominal. Copy. Two minutes into the burn now, as you're hearing, everything continuing to look good. Two minutes. 
59 seconds for the parameters are nominal. 0.45 for delta V. 12.6 on the nozzles. 59.6.46 and 12.6 and Cadillo parameters are nominal. 236, 0.46 for delta V, 12.6 on the nozzles and Cadillo parameters are nominal. Copy. And next point 46 and for the delta V and 13 on the nozzles. Now three minutes into the dual orbit burn, about two, uh, a minute and three. two minutes and 20 seconds left. And 0 46 for delta V, the dual parameters are nominal. Three fifteen, eight seventy six, zero forty five, twelve point two, and the uh, parameters are nominal. Three thirty, ninety four point one, zero forty five, twelve point eight, and the parameters are nominal. Copy. 345, 0.45, and 13.2, and 12.8, and Kadu parameters are nominal. Copy. Four minutes in now. Four minutes. One minute and 20 seconds left. 0.9, for delta V. Copy. 415, 113.7, 0.46, and 12.9. The dual parameters are nominal. Copy. 430, 120.8, 0.46 for delta V. 421. Zero. We are done with the burn. The burn is complete. And there you go. Complete deorbit burn now. That was about uh, five minutes and 20 seconds long, and that uh, was intended to drop the Soyuz, uh, slow it down and drop it back into the Earth's atmosphere so that it could begin its journey home to the step of Kazakhstan today. Crews now on their way for a 9.55 p.m. Central Time landing. Bell pressure. With the orbit burn complete, the next uh, milestone that, we, that we'll be watching for is the separation of the Soyuz descent modules from the other parts of the spacecraft. That is going to be coming up at 9.28 p.m. Central Time, and you can see how it works here. That middle portion is where the crew, uh, Cassidy, Evanition, and uh, Wagner are all inside of. It separates from the other parts because, parts because it has the heat shield that will protect the crew as they return to Earth. Since we've got a little bit of time before the uh, 
separation of the descent module occurs, we can take a few minutes out for some more questions being sent in by users on social media. If you have a question of your own, you can send it in using the hashtag AskNASA, and we will try and answer a few more before the night's over. Right now, our first question is coming from Rebecca, asking how long it's going to take for the astronauts coming back today to physically reacclimate to life on Earth after their 196 days in space. That is um, that is a good question, and uh, you will hear from the astronauts that gravity is, is not a lot of fun to get reused to. Once you get to space, you get used to, to zero gravity pretty quickly, but getting used to gravity again can take a little bit of adjustment. Uh, they have um, about two months, uh, 45 to 60 days set aside for reacclimation and also uh, some technical debriefs. And that is basically their, their job once they get back to Earth for the first couple of months, just getting um, back into the groove of life here on the planet. Uh, it doesn't take quite that long to, to get totally reacclimated. Um, that is probably more like a few weeks, although it probably varies from, from person to person. But they do have that time set aside to really dig into just returning to life on Earth and, and getting back to normal. Next question is coming from Wilson, who wants to know what the difference between ballistic entry and normal entry is. Um, a ballistic entry, I mentioned earlier that we had some of the landing forces ready to support a ballistic entry if it did occur, and that is when the Soyuz comes in at a steeper um, uh, attitude than than it than planned for. Um, it is. Uh, a mode of re-entry that the Soyuz can support, but it's not the preferred one. It's a little bit of a rougher ride and um, takes the astronauts into a place where there are fewer, there's less landing support stage to help them. So uh, we do always plan for um, an entry at our regular landing site, but we stage um, some support at the ballistic landing site just in case it's needed. And we've got a third question now from Ken, who is asking, uh, during re-entry, do the astronauts communicate in English or Russian? So if you've been listening tonight, um, what you are hearing on NASA TV is uh, an interpreter who is interpreting both the astronauts who are speaking in Russian and the Russian flight controllers on the ground who are talking back to them. So most of what you are hearing is actually taking place in Russian, and then we have a translator who translates both parts of those conversations. So sometimes it sounds a little bit like they're talking to themselves, but that is um, the the full conversation between the two, the two groups um, in, occurring entirely in Russian for this, since it is a Russian vehicle and the Russian flight controllers are primarily responsible for it. I cannot even reach like this. Irkuti, how do you read us? We have interference. We can hardly copy you. Copy. As our pressure stable, we understood, and by all pressure practically zero. Is that correct? Uh, we did not copy. You are coming in garbled. And by all we have 20, it's basically zero.
about 15 minutes now until we do hit that point, uh, 9.28 p.m. when the Soyuz descent module separates from the other parts of the Soyuz. Everything uh, continuing to go smoothly as we head towards that. And we're just 40 minutes away now from landing. Once we get to that point, things will start happening pretty quickly with the uh, atmospheric re-entry beginning at 9.31 and then the max G-load for the astronauts following that at 9.38. Fifteen minutes to separation. Yes, we confirm. Fifteen minutes to separation. Please remember to continue your commentary, even if uh, there is uh, no two-way comma. In VO, we have uh, zero. In the SR descent module, we have the pressure of 767. And after re-entry, in about five minutes, there will be a comm session for about two minutes. And we will be able to hear you. So you can report on the deload. Are you ready? Yes.
35 minutes left until today's landing and just 10 minutes to go until we get to that uh, 10 minutes to separation. <laughs> that separation point that you just heard them talking about. Uh, that is again when the descent module that the crew members are in, Chris Casti, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Ivan Bogner, uh, separates from the other elements of the Soyuz. The descent module has uh, both the heat shield and the parachutes, which are key components of a safe landing, of course. So uh, separation of the modules allows those elements to be exposed and then used during landing. Иркуты до разделения. Иркуты. Six minutes. Six and a half minutes to separation. Закройте гермошлемы. Включите. Please close your visors. Activate the rescue automated system. Также напоминаю о том, что надо отжать. And release. Тангенты отключить передачу. Your PTTs. Deactivate your transmitters. Тангенты без фиксатора. And then you have to talk to us by pushing the PTT button without uh, securing it. Just five more minutes left before we get to that uh, descent module separation. And we are going to take a few more questions while we have a minute uh, from the Ask NASA group on social media. You can send yours in using that hashtag, Ask NASA. And our first one um, is from NASA Wanderer, who's asking what happens after the astronauts land. Um, they, there will be a few minutes um, after they land while the helicopters with all the support personnel and the ATVs um, will, will move in to meet them. So they'll be on their own for a few minutes before they are then um, converged on and uh, the crew who's there to meet them begins working to get them out. They'll set up a, 
a ladder um, to help them help pull them out of the capsule, and uh, then they'll be moved into chairs while they can, where they can sit and, and collect themselves a few minutes. We'll be able to um, hopefully see all that from the videographer who will be on site. Um, they will all gather in three chairs uh, in front of the, the small crowd that meets them and then um, be taken to the medical tents after they are given a chance to make a, a few phone calls. Uh, and the medical tents will have a few checkups and then they will go on the helicopters that met them there and move to uh, Jessica's Gone where planes will be waiting to meet them and take them to either Moscow or uh, Houston as, as appropriate. Next question from Jane, asking, are the American astronauts fluent in Russian, and how long does it take them to learn? All of the um, astronauts who go to the International Space Station, regardless of nationality, have to be fluent in both English and Russian. Those are the two uh, official languages on the International Space Station. So even our uh, international partners from Japan and uh, Europe and, and Canada, all of them have to learn English and Russian as well, if they don't know, already know one or the other. Um, that does take a long time, and a lot of the astronauts will tell you that that's one of the harder parts of their training. They begin that um, as soon as they are chosen as astronaut candidates and spend a lot of their first few years of training getting uh, the basics down, but they uh, continue that training once they're assigned to a mission to make sure that they are ready before they get to the International Space Station and able to communicate with some of the ground teams supporting them. And finally, this one from Elizabeth asking whether or not the, uh, we, uh, how many times the uh, Soyuz capsules are reused. And the Soyuz is only used the one time. We do um, have some uh, spacecraft that are, are reusable. Of course, the space shuttles were reused over and over. And now um, the SpaceX Crew Dragons are also going to be reused now that we are beginning to use them. But the Soyuz, uh, just the one time. That is um, all that we have time for now before the module separation begins, but you can go ahead and uh, be pulling those in, uh, sending those into us using the hashtag AskNASA on social media. Иркутская separation program. Copy. Иркуты минута. Иркуты one minute to separation. Prepare for separation of modules.
this point, this will use descent module is separating from the orbital module and the instrumentation and propulsion module while the vehicle is about 87 miles above the Earth. Orbital module and instrumentation and propulsion modules are going to burn up in the Earth's atmosphere while the descent module with the crew inside goes on towards that landing site in Kazakhstan. And confirmation here on the ground that we did get module separation. We see separation on our telemetry and two and a half minutes till atmospheric re-entry. That next milestone coming up at 9.31 p.m. Central Time. By that point, the Soyuz will be 62 miles above the Earth, and that's when atmospheric entry begins. The crew will begin to feel the first effects of gravity since they left Earth 196 days ago. Just about a minute left to go before we do reach that, reach that atmospheric entry point. Meanwhile, teams here on the ground are reporting that all the support teams are in place and will be ready when the Soyuz arrives back on Earth in Kazakhstan. Irkuti, 30 seconds till atmospheric re-entry. Now at that point where the Soyuz capsule is going to be experiencing the atmosphere again, again this is when the crew will first begin feeling gravity again, 62 miles above the Earth. It's also when the descent module's computer will be orienting the capsule so that the heat shield is pointing forward, protecting it from the heat generated as it begins to experience the Earth's atmosphere. Unintelligible. At this point, the Soyuz is begin beginning to entry, beginning to enter the plasma um, as it uh, makes its way through the Earth's atmosphere. That does uh, cause the uh, communications with the ground to get a bit uh, broken at some points. At this point, it's about uh, 80 kilometers above the Earth or 50 miles.
not intelligible. Still about four minutes before this OU's exits, this uh, area where it's going through plasma as, uh, as the uh, as, as the Soyuz begins to ex experience the Earth's atmosphere again, and the uh, air around it heats up as it as it's moving through the atmosphere. That will uh, end at about 9:38 p.m. Central Time. That's also when the crew will begin experiencing the the heaviest G loads as they make their way back to Earth. Everything's still quiet as the Soyuz uh, still in this period where it's going through the plasma and the Earth's atmosphere. Just about three minutes left of this, but everything going as planned, heading towards that 9.55 p.m. Central Time landing in Kazakhstan, southeast of Jeskiska. On board, of course, Commander uh, Expedition 63, Commander Chris Casty and Flight engineers Anatoly Ivanishin and Ivan Wagner about to uh, land back on Earth after 196 days in space. Unintelligible. A little less than a minute before the uh, Soyuz exits the plasma and the crew uh, experiences the heaviest G loads that they will get on their trip back. So USMS-16 should be coming out of the plasma now. Again, the crew will be experiencing uh, the highest G-loads of their drip back to Earth about uh, four to five times what we experience in regular gravity on the ground. 
Just 15 minutes now until the Soyuz MS-16 touches down in Kazakhstan. At this point, they're about 35,105 feet above the Earth, traveling at a speed just under 514 miles per hour. Computers will be commanding the first parachutes to deploy. Two pilot chutes, one 6.7 square feet and one 48.4 square feet. Those will pull out eventually the 258 square foot drogue chute, which will slow down the Soyuz to 178 miles per hour in only about 16 seconds and begin stabilizing the capsule. Less than 12 minutes to go now until uh, the Soyuz MS-16 touchdown in Kazakhstan. That's coming up at 9.55 p.m. Central Time. As the Soyuz makes its way back towards Earth, the drogue shoots, shoots, uh, parachutes will jettison and make way for the 3,281-foot main parachute, which slows the Soyuz down to about 15.6 miles per hour.
10 minutes now to go until today's 9.55 p.m. Central Time touchdown. You can hear that we're experiencing some bad audio right now, but uh, waiting got uh, some confirmations from the teams at the landing site. Nine minutes to go now, hearing a little bit more audio. Hopefully that'll continue uh, improving and we'll be able to get some additional updates. Again, we're heading towards that 9.55 p.m. Central Time landing. teams here on the ground hearing from the forces, uh, the landing uh, team that is uh, gathering at the landing site that one of them does now have the crew in sight and everything is looking nominal. Just uh, seven and a half minutes away from today's landing time. Again, I'm uh, getting reports from the team who is at the landing site that all is looking well. If one is unintelligible. Six minutes now until today's landing time, 9.55 p.m. Central Time. As you can uh, tell, we don't uh, have great audio connections with the uh, with the crew at the moment um, and no video yet. So we are relying on reports from the landing team who is gathering at the landing site to, uh, to let us know what's going on. They did report that all is nominal, looking well, as the crew makes its way down towards that landing site. We hope to get some video for you. We'll keep trying on that, uh, and as soon as we have it, we'll be sure to share it.
In addition to reports from the team who is gathering at the landing site that uh, everything is going well and, and nominally, they are also reporting that they have good communication back and forth with the crew, despite the fact that we can't hear it at the moment. So we'll continue uh, giving you these updates as we get them and hopefully we'll be able to see it for ourselves before too long. Again, we are heading down toward that 9.55 p.m. Central Time plan landing. That's uh, four and a half minutes from now. And reports are that everything is going nominally. Three minutes left to go before today's touchdown. Again, although we don't have uh, good communication with the crew here, we do have reports that the team on the ground has good communication with them and that everything looks nominal at this point. Uh, still continuing on towards that landing at 9.55 p.m. A minute and a half left to go until touchdown. We still don't have video from the landing site at this point, so we'll be waiting on confirmations from the team on the ground. We'll pass those on as soon as we do hear them, and uh, if we are able to get video in the meantime, we will definitely uh, put that out as well. Just a little over a minute to go now. And there is the video we've been waiting on. So we'll use under its parachute making its way down for today's landing. That should be coming up very soon at this point. Just before landing ammunition, we'll get a notice from the computers to prepare to fire six solid propellant engines called the soft landing engines and slow the Soyuz down to five feet per second or about 3.5 miles per hour. And you can see Soyuz has now touched down in Kazakhstan, 9.54 p.m. Central Time. After 196 days in space, 3,136 orbits, and 83 million miles, Chris Cassidy, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Ivan Bogner are home. 
again that landing coming at 9.54 p.m. Central Time, just a smidge early. Crew now safely on the ground. 9.54 p.m. Central Time was the, the landing point. Uh, that wraps up Chris Cassidy's third trip to space and his second long-duration mission. He spent 15 days in space during STS-127 in July of 2009 and another 166 days during Expedition 25 in 2013. On the 196 days he added on with this trip, Cassidy now has a cumulative, cumulative total of 378 days spent in space, earning him the fifth spot on the list of most time spent in space by an American. He also added four spacewalks to his previous six, and with a total of ten, is now tied for most spacewalks by a NASA astronaut and ninth for all astronauts. He has spent a total of 54 hours and 51 minutes spacewalking over the course of his three space flights. Anatoly Venetian also had two previous days in space, and uh, they were both long-duration missions, so he is coming home with a total of 476 days in space, enough to earn him the 25th place on the all-time list of time spent in space. And this flight was a first for Ivan Wagner, his first trip to space, so he has racked up a total of 196 days on this mission. Again, the crew landed safely in Kazakhstan at 9.54 p.m. Central Time. Saw them touch down here on the step of Kazakhstan. Landing crews now will be moving in and uh, making way to meet the crew, help them out of the capsule and then eventually uh, into the medical tents where they'll go through some uh, preliminary uh, tests and procedures and then get on uh, helicopters to take them back to planes that will take them home. You can see some of the helicopters beginning to make their way to the landing site now. A total of eight MI-8 helicopters with television equipment and, inflatable, and that inflatable medical tent, as well as a number of NASA representatives on their way. Once again, the Soyuz MS-16 did touch down at 9.54 p.m. Central Time. That's 8.54 a.m. in Kazakhstan, where it uh, landed. You can see the uh, recovery team making its way to the uh, uh, to the landing spot. Uh, they'll begin uh, landing and uh, moving in to meet the crew, help them out of the capsule in the next few minutes. Once they do, hopefully we'll be able to get some video from the landing site.
Again, there's a total of about eight of those helicopters that are moving in towards the landing site with a number of uh, NASA and Roscosmos representatives on board to help with various aspects of the landing procedures. Once they do arrive, a portable medical tent will be set up near the capsule where the crew will be able to change out of their launch and entry suits. And then Russian technicians will open the Soyuz hatch and help the crew members out. Since they've been living in zero gravity for the past 196 days, they'll be feeling the effects of being back, back on the Earth's surface. And so they'll be seated in special reclining chairs near the capsule for some medical tests. As soon as those have wrapped up and the crew is ready to go, they'll be helped into helicopters for a flight back to a staging site in Jessica's Khan before boarding their planes and coming home to Houston or Moscow as appropriate. So he's in a 16 and it's three crew members have been on the ground for about 10 minutes now. Currently seeing a view of uh, the steppe Kazakhstan uh, in the early morning, southeast of Jessica's gone. Can't really make it out here, but uh, just just beyond what we can see, the Soyuz did touch down at 9.54 p.m. Central Time. That's 8.54 in the morning local time. And the Soyuz, uh, the uh, landing team has been uh, steadily moving in. We saw many of the helicopters land, and so uh, they should be setting up around the Soyuz, getting ready to help the crew members out. And hopefully among them, uh, a videographer that uh, will be able to send us some video back of the crew as they get out of the Soyuz. As soon as we are able to, to get that, we'll, we'll, we'll get you that view as well. There are a few, um, a few fewer people who the normal out at the landing site today with the, the 
various uh, quarantine-related restrictions due to COVID that does uh, cut down on the number of people we send out. Um, among the people who are there, we have uh, the Deputy Chief Astronaut Reed Wiseman and Flight Surgeon Joe Schmidt. Uh, some of the people who are normally there who are not include uh, the NASA photographer Bill Ingalls and uh, NASA Public Affairs spokesperson uh, Rob Navius. They weren't able to make it out to the landing site, although Navius is in uh, Kazakhstan and may be able to give us a, a little bit of an update uh, later. He won't be on site with the crew at this point. Uh, he will be waiting for them and Jessica's gone. But hopefully we will still be able to get some video as, uh, as the team gets set up there at the landing site. Again, they touch down at 9.54 p.m. Central Time. Commander Chris Cassidy of Expedition 63 and Flight Engineers Anatoly Ivanishin and Yvonne Bogner. Teams here on the ground are getting reports from the uh, the team members at the landing site that uh, the Soyuz MS-16 did land vertically and can, uh, of course, also land safely on its side. But in this case, it landed upright. Uh, that will help the crew uh, members get out in the normal fashion. And they also uh, passed on that the crew is doing well, feeling good, and everything is looking nominal at that landing site. We've been taking uh, questions over the course of the night from uh, social media using the hashtag AskNASA, and you can send in your own question if you'd like. We'll try and get a few more of them answered before we wrap up our coverage. Uh, while we are waiting for a closer view of the crew, we'll answer a couple of that have come in in the last few minutes. First one coming from IDK, who is asking, why is the launch?
All right, another question coming in from social media. Again, send your own questions in using the hashtag AskNASA. This one coming from Maggie and asking, will the astronauts be able to see their families right away? Or do they have to be in quarantine for a period of time? Um, the astronauts, uh, they'll all be returning to their home bases, basically, uh, for Chris Cassidy, that is NASA, and he will be able to see at least some of his family members who have been uh, in quarantine themselves so that they can have access to him right away. Uh, people who haven't been able to quarantine for uh, various reasons would need to spend a little bit of extra time away from the astronauts coming home to make sure that they um, don't expose them to any uh, any illnesses, germs, while they are in um, a state that we would consider immunocompromised. Um, having been on the space station where they don't have exposure to germs on a on uh, on a regular basis like we do here on the ground, um, we want to be sure that once they are back on Earth and, and start to experience that again, that uh, they are eased back into that situation carefully. Again, you can send in your own uh, questions for us using the hashtag AskNASA. Hopefully we'll get a chance to answer a few more before the night's over. And it's now been about 20 minutes since the Soyuz MS-16 touched down in Kazakhstan. Uh, although we can't quite see them in this view, we can see the area that they landed in and hopefully we'll get a closer view before before too long. Uh, we have gotten reports from the teams that uh, met them there on the ground that the capsule landed upright and that the crew on board is feeling good and doing well. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Public Affairs Specialist Rob Navius is in uh, Kazakhstan, although he's not able to be at the landing site for this uh, for this particular landing. We do have him on the phone, though, to give us a report from what he is hearing uh, there in Jeskaskan. Rob, can you hear us? Hi, Brandy, and uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, we're actually in Karaganda at the airport. I am aboard the NASA Gulfstream jet, preparing to take off for a short flight to the forward staging city of Jezkazgan, where other NASA personnel and uh, search and recovery forces belonging to the Russian uh, Rosaviatsa search and recovery team deployed from in helicopters to the landing site a few hours ago. We will be airborne very shortly for that brief flight to Jezkazgan. There is a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft that is parked right next to us. It, too, will be airborne for Jezkazgan, where we will meet the crew. This is going to be a quick and dirty recovery operation of the crew members today. The Russians have elected to scale down the usual uh, hoopla that surrounds the return of crew members due to COVID uh, uh, cautionary procedures that uh, they are operating under with everybody wearing masks, maintaining uh, as much social distancing as possible. Uh, what will happen is uh, Cassidy, Ivanishin, and Wagner will emerge uh, uh, from the Soyuz MS-16. They'll be loaded into individual helicopters after medical tests in a nearby erected medical tent, and then they'll be flown uh, to uh, from uh, the landing site to Jezkazgan, about a 40-minute helicopter flight that will facilitate and hasten their ability to get on these respective planes, Cassidy on the NASA plane, uh, Ivanishin and Wagner on the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft fly back to their respective homes. We'll be uh, flying back, of course, to Houston. They will be flying back to Star City uh, to the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center outside of Moscow. Everything has gone extremely smoothly. The uh, NASA team uh, deployed yesterday with other Russian uh, search and recovery officials for an overnight, a quick overnight in Jezkazgan which has been a familiar landing uh, staging city. Uh, Jezkazgan uh, lies to the southwest of Karaganda, which is where everybody had gathered earlier in the week for landing team briefings and other preparations. Brandy? Brandy? Hey, thanks, Rob. We appreciate that. And it looks like uh, in, uh, in Moscow, the flight control team there is beginning to get some video from the actual landing site. We just saw Chris Cassidy being uh, helped out of the Soyuz capsule and onto the to the uh, the tarp where he and the other crew members will be gathering over the next few minutes. Uh, try and get this uh, 
video for you directly as well, but uh, but that was great to see him uh, see him emerging from the capsule. Um, Rob, I know that this is a little bit different from you, for you. Um, what kind of uh, information are you able to to get there? Uh, we're getting uh, we're getting information as it uh, becomes available on a moment by moment basis. Uh, no problem getting information from the landing site through a variety of sources, uh, and uh, we uh, heard uh, the descent of the uh, Soyuz under its chutes all the way down to touchdown uh, just about the same time we arrived at the airport uh, for uh, boarding uh, the NASA plane to head down to Jezkazgan. So uh, it's basically the uh, astronauts coming to meet us in Jezkazgan with Cassidy uh, uh, climbing aboard the G-5. There will be a, a pair of uh, NASA flight surgeons attending to him on the flight all the way back to Houston with one refueling stop and uh, we should be back in Houston on Thursday evening, uh, Central Time. That'll be a long trip, but I'm sure it'll be good for him to be home. We're getting a little bit more video uh, now as uh, the crew continues to be extracted. Now seeing Yvonne Wagner, this again coming from uh, Roscosmos. Uh, looks like we've got two of the three crew members out now, and we'll keep watching for uh, Anatoly Venetian who should be up next. You can see a few of the NASA personnel who are gathered out at the landing site. Uh, all of these uh, groups will be making their way back to uh, Rob Navius and uh, uh, meeting them, and, and Jessica's gone, as he mentioned a moment ago. And there is an Antoli Evanition as well out of the capsule. All the crew members are looking good. As you can see, as uh, as Rob mentioned, all the people who are meeting them there wearing masks to help protect them, an additional layer of protection, and uh, beyond uh, the quarantine that uh, these these uh, members of the landing team would have gone through as well. Rob, if you're still there, I, I, I don't know um, what it is for you in Karaganda, but it looks like the weather's pretty pleasant for the team at the landing site. Yeah, the landing time temperature, Brandy, was about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. A cold front moved through this region uh, late yesterday and overnight and passed uh, just to the east of the landing zone just in time for touchdown. It is cloudy here in Karaganda, uh, but uh, we're in Jezka's gone where we're headed here a short time from now. Uh, the sun should be out, the landing occurring one hour and three minutes after sunrise, and uh, as we speak, uh, the pilots, the NASA pilots out of Wellington Field nearby the Johnson Space Center are revving up the engines for this NASA Gulfstream jet, and we'll be taking off a short time from now. It's looking like the crew members might be moving into the medical tent before too long as well. We just saw the uh, landing team there uh, it, pausing for a, a group photo. Again, everybody looking really good for having just spent 196 days in space. Though we didn't get a video of uh, the landing itself, we did get reports, and you can just make it out there in the background uh, behind the crowd. The the Soyuz did land upright, and uh, we're able to get confirmation from the teams who met them that uh, the crew was feeling well. Now we're able to see that for ourselves. Everybody looking like they are uh, they are feeling good and should be able to to move on to the medical tent before too long.
Rob, do you know if uh, Cassidy has made any special request for food that uh, the team members might have ready for him on the plane? That's a great question, Brandy. And actually, in true SEAL fashion, he made no request. He said whatever was on board uh, would be just fine. As I, as I mentioned, we will have one refueling stop on route to Houston in which there'll be some catering of food uh, for the passengers on board, including Cassidy. I think he's just happy to be home after 196 days in space. Seeing uh, Anatoly Evanishin right now, but yes, all the crew members are looking pretty happy to be home. Team members still uh, unloading some of the limited cargo that the Soyuz is able to carry as well. And Evanition there being the first to move off towards the medical tent. This again is a tent that is uh, brought uh, with the team that meets the Soyuz at the landing site so that they can get into a protected area to uh, change out of their Sokol spacesuits and uh, go through a few uh, preliminary tests before they then will get on the helicopters for that 40-minute ride that Rob mentioned back to Jessica's gone where they'll be met by planes to take them back to their various homes. Evanition and Wagner both on their way now to the medical tent. You can see what that tent looks like in this view. Chris Cassidy looks like uh, making a, a phone call back to home and now on his way to the tent as well. Crew members are, uh, are carried in the chairs just to be extra safe and prevent any possibility of a, a trip as they are experiencing gravity again for the first time in 196 days. So there, the crew members uh, making their way into the medical tent. That is the last that we'll see of them tonight. Uh, once again, today's landing wraps up a 196-day stay in space for the members of the Expedition 63 crew. With that 196 days added to his total, Chris Casti has now spent 378 days in space over the course of three missions. That puts him number at number five on the list of time spent in space for U.S. astronauts. Anatoly Evanishin, meanwhile, uh, also having made three journeys to space now, now has a total of 476 days in space, landing him a spot on uh, the all-time uh, list at uh, at the 25th place, and Ivan Wagner uh, just completing his first space flight now with 196 days on his total.
with Gru safely in the medical tent and going undergoing the final preparations before they get on their helicopters that are the first uh, leg of their journey back to their homes. Uh, we are ready to wrap up our coverage for the night. We uh, have the crew again safely landing in Kazakhstan at 9.54 p.m. Central Time today. That's 8.54 a.m. in Kazakhstan. And uh, now they will begin making their way back to Moscow and in the case of Chris Cassidy, Houston. It's been a uh, momentous night of, uh, of coverage with uh, the hatch closure and uh, undocking, deorbit, and landing. So we will be replaying, recapping all of that for you in a video file that will be airing at 1 a.m. Central Time here on NASA TV. So if you haven't gotten enough yet, you can take a look at that a little later tonight. And with that, we are going to wrap up our coverage of the Expedition 63 Landing in Kazakhstan. Again, Chris Casty, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Nivon Wagner now safely home after 196 days in space. Thanks so much for joining us. This is Mission Control Houston. Many pilots today don't go out with an immediate concern on their flight that they're going to run into the ground. There is a, a problem in aviation of controlled flight into a terrain. Controlled flight into terrain uh, is a case where you 